This interview is part of the History Heard project. The content of this interview may be used for historical research. However, no part of the video itself may be reproduced without the express written permission of an authorized representative of History Heard. Today is August 7, 2012 at 1.30 p.m. This is an interview with Mr. Harry Friedman in Culver City, California. He was born on November 12, 1946 in Omaha, Nebraska. Mr. Friedman is a recognized leader and innovator in the television industry. As the executive producer of the number one quiz show Jeopardy and the number one game show Wheel of Fortune since 1999, he has won seven Emmy Awards and has been nominated for 30. In 2007, he was honored by the National Association of Television Program Executives with the prestigious Brandon Tartikoff Legacy Award and was inducted into the Broadcasting and Cable Hall of Fame. Mr. Friedman, what inspired you to get into television? I think what inspired me was uh, being able to grow up with television. I was born at a time when television was the, the latest and greatest technology. It was all new. And I happened to have the good luck to um, be in a family that owned a furniture and appliance business. And my dad started selling TVs in 1949. And he was so fascinated, he became a TV repairman. And so he was one of the first TV repairmen in the city of, of Omaha. So I really did learn about television kind of from the inside out. That's so cool. And then how did you wind up involved with game shows? Did you choose that direction or did you more or less fall into that area? It was a little bit of both. Um, I was living in the Midwest in the late 60s and I was a big fan of Hollywood Squares which was just hitting its stride uh, around 1969-1970 and it was one of those things that I, I looked at that show and I said you know I, I could do that and then I really didn't think a whole lot more about it. I just knew that I wanted to be in television, not game shows in particular. And I uh, foolishly just one day packed up my car and like the Beverly Hillbillies, I just mm -hmm. drove off to California. I said, I'm going to get a job in television. And I did, um, I guess, what would be considered networking in those days. I called the few people that I knew. And one thing led to another. And I met up with an old friend from Kansas City who was a... Um, a nightclub singer and she invited me to watch her act and she was very awkward in between songs and she knew that I had some experience in writing I was a copywriter and a newspaper reporter and she said could you write some patter for me stuff in between my songs and I said sure I did it went over very well and in the audience one night was a friend of a friend of hers who knew that they were looking for someone to write questions at Hollywood Squares. Wow. And that's how I got my first real job. And then you're the executive producer of both Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. What exactly does an executive producer do? An executive producer is a little bit like being the CEO of, of a corporation, really in charge of everything, both in, on the business end and the creative end, uh, overseeing every aspect of the production, and then also the marketing, advertising, promotion uh, of all the other aspects of the show. So there's, it, it's really a, a very wide-ranging job. Mm -hmm. And the best part of it is the end product is something that makes people happy. Absolutely. And then Jeopardy! and Wheel of Fortune have not only survived but thrived for nearly 30 years, which is incredible given the number of entertainment options and viewers constantly shifting program preferences. What about these two shows has held viewers' attention? Is it is their success a result of Alex Trebek and the combo, combination of Pat Sajak and Vanna White? Or what would you say? Uh, I think there are a lot of things that account for the success of both shows. Uh, primarily the format. Mm -hmm. Wheel of Fortune is Hangman with Prizes. And uh, Jeopardy is a quiz show turned upside down. We give you the answer, you give us the question. That might be an oversimplification, but certainly Pat and Vanna, audiences seem to love them and have for 30 years. Alex, there's really nobody better at doing what he does, and they're, uh, the hosts are really good fit for the shows. Um, and and they're, the shows are very accessible, they're very family friendly. You walk into a room, if Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune is on TV, you're going to play. Mm -hmm. 
And then how did these, I, the idea for Jeopardy and the Wheel of Fortune, how did they come about originally? Well, I'm told that uh, when Merv Griffin was a kid, he and his sister used to play hangman on car trips, and that always fascinated him. Uh, the idea for Jeopardy, as the story goes, was actually um, Merv's uh, first wife's idea. And they were uh, on a flight somewhere, and it was right after all the quiz show scandals of the 50s. And nobody was doing game shows, certainly not quiz shows. Mm -hmm. And Merv said um, to his wife, Julianne is her name, you know, I really want to do a quiz show. And, um, and, and his wife said, well, why don't you do a show where you give the contestants the answers? And he said, no, no, people went to jail for doing that <laughs> during the scandal. She said, no, um, 5,280 feet. And he said, what is a mile? And that's, as the story goes, that's how it started. Cool. Yeah. And then game shows typically have an older audience, you yes. know, viewers 55 yeah. and above. Yes. How do you attract the, the attention of the younger viewers? Good question. <clears throat> the, you know, it's funny, that's been an age-old problem with, with game shows from the very beginning. Uh, for some reason, the long-running ones do have an older uh, viewer base, and I don't know if that's because they're more loyal or because they have more time or they're more interested in learning stuff. Mm -hmm. What we're finding now, though, is something really interesting, and that is that a lot of young kids, mostly between the ages of four and eight, have become fascinated, in particular, with Wheel of Fortune. And they're getting their moms to watch. And their moms are in their 20s and early 30s. So they're the demographic that we're going after. But if we went directly after that demographic, we probably wouldn't get it. So it's the kids that are bringing their young moms, the younger viewers, into watching the show. They are willing to do that because as kids themselves, they watched with their parents and grandparents. So now we have the third and fourth generation of wheel watchers. So that's one of the benefits of sticking around this long. And then you've also, you know how you know, PlayStation, I guess, games yes. and Wii <clears throat> games to yes. the, the teenagers. We have, we have PlayStation, we have Xbox, we have Wii, we have iPad, iPhone, Android. On yeah. every platform you can possibly imagine, you cannot escape us. <laughs> What's next for Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy? You always are doing something new. Right. Will it, you see a you know, 3D version right. coming up? Or? Um, it may be. It may be in 3D one of these days. What we're trying to do is continually make the show interesting and fresh, but not change the basic game. The basic game of, of both shows is still exactly the same as it was a lot of years ago. It's working. So it's working, yes. And then when game shows are introduced these days, they're usually revivals of a classic format. Like right. Pyramid and the newlywed game. Right. Is there a completely new and different game show that's yet to debut, do you think? Um, I, I think there may be. The last really, truly original show that I've seen um, is Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Mm -hmm. Where, when you think about it, it's one contestant. There's, it, it's just one contestant just betting on his, own, his or her own knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, and then sometimes getting help from the audience. But I thought that was a truly original format. And it is, and as a result, it's doing really well all over the world. Deal or no deal, on the other hand, while it still is on the air in other countries, there's no game there. Right. There's no game. You don't need to, you just need to know when to stop. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like going to the casino. Wow. Yeah.